Well, hello friends, hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to Tuesday's edition of Take 5. We're in a series right now. This week, our title is Rapture 101, The Days of Noah. And we are comparing what the, the days of Noah look like as compared to what our time today looks like. Because Jesus told us in Matthew 24, uh, when it comes time for the rapture, as it was, as things appeared, as people were living in the days of Noah, they would also be living at the time of the return of the Son of Man. So the Bible tells us, with, with, without a doubt and without hesitation, that the generation of people before the flood, it tells us what they were like, and it also confirms that the generation of people living when the Lord comes from his, for his church will be a mirror image of one another. So what we're going to do, we're going to spend today through Friday comparing the two so that we understand just how close we are to the return of the Lord. The first thing that we see about that generation of Noah's day is that they were a corrupt generation. That is no different than uh, you know, our generation living today, we do live in a corrupt world. You'd have to be blind, really, uh, to not know and realize that we live in a corrupt society today. Now, this period um, uh, that people lived in prior to the building of the ark was known as the antediluvian age, and it existed from the time of the creation of Adam and Eve up until uh, the time of destruction by the great flood. It was about fifteen or 1,600 years, something like that. And the reason God brought this catastrophic annihilation on the world during that time is found in Genesis 6. We've got a good bit of scripture today, so uh, bear with me. We're going to try to read it because it paints the picture better than I can tell it. So here, here's why God brought this flood on the face of the earth. Now, the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. Well, if, if that's what it looked like then, and if if the time of the return of the Lord is going to be a mirror image of those days, then we can for definite say that because we live in a very corrupt and violent time today. I mean, just look around you. I mean, people think nothing about going in schools and just, just killing dozens uh, of people, innocent people. People think nothing about going in churches and doing the same or going into a, a strip mall and doing that or, or going in and getting at a concert where a group of people are gathered together and sniping them from a distance. People think nothing about that. Violence is everywhere. It's rampant. It's not just allocated just to the large cities like some of us in small town Alabama think. It's not that. It is everywhere. Society is corrupt and it is violent and it is a picture of the day that Noah lived in. The Bible said, God saw the earth and behold, it was corrupt and all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. The Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. Every intention, that means every thought, every idea, every motive, every imagination, every deed of mankind was an expression of the fallen and deprived state uh, that they live in. Their, their wickedness was so great and continual that in the original Hebrew writing of that particular verse, it's considered to be chronic and constant evil and not sporadic and intermittent. In other words, we don't just have little, little bumps of evil along the way. It's chronic. It's constant. Everything is evil about society. And, and you can pretty well say that that's the time we live in today. The Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out. I'm going to wipe out man whom I've created from the face of the land, man and animal and creeping thing and the birds of heaven, for I am sorry that I have made them. Imagine the God of heaven having those kind of emotions. The Bible said God regretted that he had made man on the earth. The Bible said it grieved God in his heart. The Bible said God was sorry that he had made man. Now, please keep in mind, God doesn't have to undo anything he does because what he does is perfect. So he doesn't have to do that. But when the writer Moses wrote this out like this, this was an anthropomorphic phrase or expression. And what that basically does is give something that is non-human or divine, gives it human characteristics so that we can understand how they feel. 
And that's why Moses wrote it this way, so that we could understand that God is just expressing consummate grief about what has happened to mankind. Basically, this is saying God is grieved that he created mankind in such utter perfection, and now they have willfully turned their entire lives over to the chaos of sin and evil. And and really, mankind is no different today, and, and you don't have to wait till 2024 to look at the condition of mankind. Peter said the last days started there at the day of Pentecost. So that's been 2,000 years. And the Bible's been telling us about the evil of mankind for the last 2,000 years, calling it the last days. Just, just listen to what Paul told Timothy. He said, Timothy, know this, that in the last days, difficult or perilous times are gonna come. People will love only themselves and their money. Well, that sounds like today, doesn't it? They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They'll betray their friends. They'll be reckless. They'll be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. He says, this is what society is going to look like in the last days. It's going to be just this corrupt by sin. But Please understand, it's not just the world outside of the church. He said there are going to be people inside the church that are pretenders the same way because the next verse says they're going to act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Well, man, what a picture that he was telling us of how horrible society is going to be in the last days. And, and Peter echoed that in his writings. He said, most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come mocking the truth, following their own desires. They'll say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything remains the same since the world was created. So they laugh at it and they make fun of this idea called the rapture. But Peter went on to say, they deliberately forget that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command. And he brought the earth out of the water, surrounded it by water. And then he used the same water to destroy that ancient world by a mighty flood. And by the same word that he created it, he keeps it intact today, stored up for fire. It's being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. And basically he's telling us that people today and even in his day when he was writing had deliberately forgotten that God has already given them a picture of what he's going to do at the rapture when he takes righteous man off of this earth and leaves unrighteous man here to have to deal with the judgment of the tribulation. The wicked actions of mankind didn't catch by God, God by surprise in Noah's day, nor does it catch him by surprise in our day. He knew humanity would do this, but he loved them so much that he grieved over man's rejection of his divine love then and now. We live in a very corrupt time today, and it was corrupt in Noah's day. And if we see the same corruption today that we saw then, Jesus said, we better look out because the Son of Man is soon to return. Well, hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Wednesday's edition of Take 5. Till then, God bless you. Have a great day. Hey, remember this. Trust the Lord, my friend. He will never fail you.